It's never a question of if. It's a question of when. There aren't supposed to be any shortcuts to becoming Enduro World Series champion. Veterans with experience win titles. They failed to mention that to Richie Rue. Yeah, I'm stoked for him. He's just been absolutely crushing it and putting it together. The current EWS champion was the guy who everyone said had future potential. But he's very quickly turned that into present tense dominance. Kind of took a little bit to settle in. You know, I did three in a row and I led to the title, so it's it was a pretty big shock. There's street smarts, and then there's trail smarts. When it comes to riding bikes really fast, there are few better people to learn trail smarts from than Richie's former teammate, Jared Graves. I love working with riders and seeing Richie in finale last year, getting the title was just... I was so proud for him, you know, like it was a really cool day. When the grasshopper becomes the sensei almost, eh? <laughs> yeah, little sh**. <laughs> 2014, Hallelujah. Last season, Graves joined 2013 EWS champ Jerome Clements in a club nobody wants to be in. EWS champions cursed by crashes. No, it's not cursed. It's just the way it happened. Everyone's pushing it so hard and riding that limit, and all it takes is one mistake or a bit of bad luck, and you get hurt, man. I think it's to the best. I like to change that. I like to, you know, win races again this year and get the title two times in a row. And this is kind of my chance. First on stage two, first on stage three, first on stage six, first in the overall. If you're looking to break curses, riding this fast is definitely one way to go about it. Yeah, we're all done with uh, round one in Chile. Time to have a nice little five hour tour. Peace out. <laughs> you just put your legs further apart. Yes! Nailed it! Oh, you're gonna love that. King, can you do one for me now, please? What the f? Those shoes are, That might King. just be a new Facebook cover photo. I better get photo cards no. somewhere on that. I'm gonna get over because she'll post it before me. No, I'm not going to post it before you. Go ahead, just post. <laughs> Drive six hours away from the Chilean coast, climb through the Andes up to an elevation of 2,000 meters, and you'll get to a place in Argentina with trails dustier and maybe rowdier than anything we've seen previously on the Enduro World Series. Cerro Cathedral. It's worth the dumb hike. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> Man, I'm glad I rode my moto on the sand track before I came out here. Did you use it? <laughs> Just loose. You throw roots into your own face as you're going down. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> Dry, dusty, blown out condition some big wide open tracks and the holes were kind of big but we didn't know the they were gonna 
become that big. My weekend was over before it started. Second stage practice, just a rock in the dirt that you couldn't even see over the bars, on the ground just trying to breathe and mouthful of dirt, throbbing right shoulder. Just a nightmare. I really fell for the guy. It sucked. I was a lone soldier out there, hanging out and jared out, so I was kind of out there just practicing by myself and riding my bike and trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Bad luck hadn't started for me. Jared and I ended up both getting food poisoning Thursday night, so I woke up Friday, just, yeah, ruined. Nah, things didn't go to plan this weekend. Curtis was the only one racing, and his rest and heartbeat is at 100, and then his max heart rate's 140, 150. It's way off what it should be. trail conditions, fast racing, and plentiful crashes. Nowhere is the old cliche about keeping things rubber side down more appropriate than here in Argentina. The best mechanic in the world, gonna have to swap two tires in less than 10 minutes because I have to be at stage five in 40 minutes, 35 now, so these guys are in a rush. I definitely think like tires in the past year or two have come around a lot from what we used to have. Before the current multitude of widths, compounds, sidewall thicknesses, and tread patterns, mountain bikers were faced with some pretty dubious tire choices because, well, because we didn't know any better. We could take each part of the bike apart and you could see how the technology has changed and made a difference. The first tires I wanted was the WTB Velociraptors. They were the business, apparently. I actually saw a set not long ago and I was just like, wow, that's, that's not a very good looking tire right there. But at the time, like blown away, I was like, oh my God, it's, it's for the front only. It must be damn good. It's a never ending, evolving part on a bicycle. Technology advances and your speeds increase. Different ways in how you can set up a bike for different conditions. Now tubeless tires, that made a huge difference being able to use less pressure. And as a collective, it's made a huge difference. That's way worse than cracked or so. It's blowing out so bad now. There's nothing like we were training on. I was just foot out everywhere. A good thing I didn't watch the head cam yesterday because it's a completely different new track. It makes you feel like you don't know how to ride a bike. It's insane. Oh my god, that was the fuck. It was gnarly, like, I've ridden lines that I've never even ridden before. There are new ruts out there that I didn't even know would exist. Hey, personally, I can't comprehend how Richie rode stage two like he did. It's just really impressive. I don't think I'd go that fast on a dirt bike. <laughs> There may be no curses in bike racing, but there are harsh realities about riding your bike when you do it for a living, rather than just for fun. When you're a professional, a bad day on the bike isn't just a bad day. At the top of the results sheet, the defending champ will leave South America with two new trophies in his luggage. 
And when it comes to enduro racing right here and right now, Richie Rue is what fast looks like. And everyone else is playing follow the leader.